Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Red Precision. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at a feature that you've probably used a whole bunch if you are a Niagara user, you've been through Niagara certification, and that's B format. But I think there's a lot of additional functionality that's there that if you just dig a little bit further, you can get a lot more out of B format and make your PXs and potentially your um, jobs and your life building out. Niagara stations a little bit easier. So let's jump into PowerPoint real quick, go over the basics, and then we'll jump into Niagara and actually look at it in practice. All right, so what is B format? Just real quick, B format's a, a simple format that allows you to make calls to various parts of a Niagara station from just within a bit of string text. This is what makes um, relativization, PXs, templates, alarms, localization all possible. And uh, you probably are already using it a ton in your stations, especially on your PXs. And the way you can tell it's uh, B format is because of the percent sign at the beginning and the end. And then we also can... Uh, string these B format calls together so that we have something like this where we have a parent dot display name that dot is where we're stringing different parts together and we can keep going um, basically an unlimited number of times and you'll see in some of these examples that uh, I do it a few times in a row. So our examples, these are the basics. These actually come out of the documentation from Niagara on using B format. We'll get into more complicated stuff here in a moment in Niagara. But uh, the default one, you've probably seen this a bunch, percent sign, period, or dot, percent sign. This is the default. It's going to show you uh, whatever the out property is of this point that you're looking at or this object that you're looking at. And typically, it has way more information that you want. So you need to go down a little bit more narrow with uh, the value that you're trying to pull out. And that brings us to the next example, which is this out.value. Now we're looking at the out property specifically of the point. And then we're going in underneath that point and we're looking at the value of the out property of the point. Another example beneath that, out.status. Same thing as that out.value, except now we're looking at the status instead of the value. And then the next one, status.flags to string, a little more complicated, actually quite a bit more complicated. Because what we're doing is we're looking at the status of the point. So we're implying the out there. And then we're calling a flags to string method, which is a part of the status object. And that method will do a little bit of work to convert our status to a string that is readable to humans and looks nice compared to the default stuff that you might get out of just the um, out.status. So resources, this is the really important part. Um, this is where you're going to find out whether or not you can do what you want to do and um, the correct uh, way to write out your names and things uh, when it comes to capitalization and that sort of stuff uh, is the AX slot sheet on your point. If you're looking at pulling up a specific uh, piece of value or data out of a point, that's the place to go. And then if you're looking to go a little bit further and maybe modify the data a little bit or try to display it in a different way, the Baja doc help, which is the API documentation, actually behind, like behind the scenes, the code that's running in our Niagara stations. Uh, and this tells you the available methods and things that you can call on our various different object types. The way that you can get to this, which is kind of handy, is you just right click your component, go to views, Baja doc help, and it'll bring you directly to the help document uh, for that specific component type. So now that we've gone over the basics, let's jump into Niagara, where I put together a little demonstration of the various different things that we can do from within B format, specifically with PX. All right, so we're in Niagara now, and we're going to look at some examples of how we can make use of these B formats in practice. And the way that I built out this PX is actually I just took in this Boolean writable. That's what most of these B format uh, labels are going to be used against. And I just drug it out here, and I'm using this format text option to let me use the B format and modified it as needed for each example. So got that out of the way. 
we, let's look at these examples. So the first four here underneath points are what we sort of went over in the PowerPoint. We have our default, which has our value, our status, and then the active level that the stat or that the value is coming in on. In this case, it's uh, level eight or in eight. And then we're going to our out dot value, just showing our value. I think that's this is one that uh, most people are using most often because obviously you don't want to use up this much horizontal real estate on a px with all of this data when we can do other things like using color and that kind of thing to show the statuses and then after that we've got our out dot status same idea as our out dot value except now we're just showing status instead of values and then we get to this status dot flag uh, flags to string and that's going to uh, reformat the status a little bit so that we're breaking out of the brackets and we're no longer using the active level as a part of it um, so that's no longer shown. We'll get to these bottom three in a moment here, but I just wanted to show these other options first. And our components, these uh, display name and uh, parent display name are going to be used a ton. Uh, if you're doing anything like uh, relativized graphics or that kind of thing, you're using these all the time uh, to make use of the ability to pull in the name of the component or controller or folder that you've got a px on uh, without having to statically type it in as the value and then we also can uh, climb our hierarchy our tree here by using the parent uh, method or uh, option within our b format so that now instead of showing the display name for our uh, point itself we've gone up the tree one level to which we can see is the folder and now we're showing the display name of the folder we can string that in along even further if we wanted to depending on how deep your tree go goes um, you've got plenty of options there to do that and then we've got some other special options that can be called even when uh, you can see here I'm still using as my ord my binding on this label is still going to be the boolean writable point uh, but I'm calling this user special method and it's going to give me the current logged in users uh, name so this might be helpful on your graphics if you wanted to have like a header or something like that and show who the currently logged in user is so that you're making sure people are logging out when they're supposed to that kind of thing it's a nice uh, feature to know that's there because it's not super apparent unless um, you've been digging through documentation then the other one is time. We can pull this time up um, as well as the various methods that are a part of the time. Um, we can all pull those things in over B format, same way as the user. Doesn't matter what the binding is, we can pull that time up directly by using that uh, time call. Now, here is where things get a little bit more interesting, and I think uh, the value really comes out for B format. Um, for more advanced applications depending on what you need. So on my Boolean Writable, I've got a alarm extension. And, you know, it would be nice to know, okay, if this uh, alarm is active or um, I'd like to know how long it's been active for. That is a value that's available to us here underneath the alarm extension this time in current state so I want to pull that up and um, I don't exactly know what to write there so if I go into my slot sheet I can find that time in current state which is here and this name make sure you're using name and not display name this name is how you're going to reference this property from within your B format. So time in current state with that first letter not capitalized camel case, sort of the norm within Niagara. So we'll go back now to our graphic and you can see that um, I'm still looking directly at our Boolean writable and then I'm just going down the tree to get to the right um, the right piece of information that I want. So we started at the Boolean writable now I need to go into my alarm extension and then within the alarm extension I know that's where my time in current state is so I'm just calling that out as well okay okay and now we can see we've been in our current alarm state for 40 minutes 
and 19.8 seconds in this case. Well, I don't really care so much about the seconds part. I This value or this point may be in a uh, alarm for a, a longer period of time. It might not be seconds, and uh, seconds don't mean a whole lot, and they take up a lot of space in this case. So I just want to get the minutes. Well, um, we know how to get to the time, but we need to get further down in and into the minutes portion of that time. So if I uh, pull up the Baja Doc help on the alarm extension, and I scroll a bit here until we find our time in current state, which this is going to be alphabetical, so we're going to scroll a bit. Keep scrolling. We got our time in current state. We can see the time in current state is a B real time object. So we're going to click on B real time, and this is going to give us uh, various methods and operations that we can do on the time or bits of data that we can pull out of the time specifically for B real time. So I'm going to scroll down a bit more, and we're going to find... get minutes as the duration of time as a number in minutes truncated to the nearest minute. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so get minutes. Got it. Go in here. We have the same B format as we had before. We're drilling down the tree. We're first going into our alarm extension. Then we're going to our time and current state property. And then within that property, we know it's a relative time so that we can pull this get minutes in as well. And that's going to spit out just the minutes for our time and current state. And I actually want to, I would prefer here at the end to add a little label in so I can do space and then type in any text string that I want to. And that's totally legal. So I'll do space min. And there you go. We've got our 42 minutes without the seconds as a, a value that we can mess around with and add to a PX. And now we can do the same kind of operation, but I don't know, maybe you wanted to show what kind of uh, state would make this go into alarm as uh, maybe you had a config page or something like that that you wanted to use uh, um, for this alarm extension. You could do that by just doing the exact same thing we just did digging in okay um, I know it's in the alarm extension and I know it's in the off normal algorithm because when I go in there I can see it right and then okay I'm in here I know it's here if I go to my slot sheet I need to figure out what that's called and it's alarm value so if I go back it's exactly what we're doing we're going to the alarm extension off nor normal algorithm and then our alarm value and pulling that up directly in RB format so I know that's a pretty uh, dense topic, B format. There's a lot there. Uh, you're probably already using it, though, so you probably have a good starting point. But there's a whole bunch more that you can do if you just understand a little bit of how to use the help, how to use your slot sheet, and then how to bring that data in and use it directly in your labels, uh, in this case, within your PX pages. Um, if there is interest, we can dive into this more with how it works in alarms because it's a little bit different um, and other functionality within Niagara. So if you would like to see that, leave that down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if, if you haven't already. And if you're in the market for some control products and uh, with really good support and that kind of thing, uh, be sure to check us out at BrodyPrecision.com and store.brodyprecision.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.